This building may not be very familiar to you, but I'm sure that the magazines we make inside are. This is the home of Future Publishing, Europe's biggest publisher of computers magazines. My name's Steve Jarrett, and I'm the editor of one of those magazines, perhaps the best known of all, Amiga Format. Before we get into business, perhaps you'd like to take a look inside. These are the offices of the biggest, best, and most famous Amiga magazine, Amiga Format. And here are a few of the people that work long and hard to bring you the most read Amiga magazine on the newsstands. Behind me is Sue White, Amiga Format's art editor. She's responsible for making sure the magazine looks as good as it does. This is Richard Jones. He's our production editor. He reads everything we write, takes out all the spelling mistakes, and makes sure it's fit to print. And this is Nick Veach, consultant editor and Amiga Format's resident technical expert. Anyway, let's leave them to get on with their work. Let's go to my desk. The video you're about to see has been created to help you get the most from your Clarissa software. It's all very well to give you instructions in the magazine, but with a great deal of software, it's much easier to understand what's going on when you can see it happening for yourself. That's why we've made this video, so we can not only explain how the software works, but also show it to you in action. This makes perfect sense with a package like Clarissa. Well now, I'll hand you over to our expert, and I hope you find this tutorial interesting and useful. Welcome to Amiga Format's Clarissa video. The aim of this tape is to introduce you to the Clarissa program that you will have found on the cover disc of Amiga Format, and also show you some of the additional features of the version 2 upgrade. Clarissa is a very powerful animation utility from Prodas, the makers of Adarage. The main purpose of the software is to convert your animations from the standard Amiga animation format into a different type of animation known as SSA from which Clarissa gets its name. SSA stands for Super Smooth Animation which, as the name suggests, is a file format designed to give smooth playback of animations at speeds of up to 50 frames per second. With the SSA format your animations will play back completely glitch free. The results are superb. But Clarissa doesn't stop there. It also brings greater flexibility to your animations as each frame can have a different palette. This makes color fade-outs even more impressive and allows for a variety of new effects. But first, let's get our version of Clarissa up and running. The first thing to do is boot up your Amiga in the usual way until you get the workbench screen. Insert the Clarissa disk and the Clarissa disk icon appears. Double click on the disk icon and there's a file on there called HD install. This is the install utility that will install it to your hard drive. Open your hard drive on this computer it's called work to install Clarissa to your hard drive Simply drag the HD install icon to your hard drive. Then double click on it. The install utility begins and as each file is copied to your hard drive, it is listed. This process takes a few seconds. Your hard drive now displays an icon, HD install. By closing your hard drive window and then reopening it, the HD install icon is renamed Clarissa. And this is your newly installed Clarissa program. To start the program, double click on the drawer, and double click on the Clarissa icon. At first, the screen display may look a little daunting. 
But all the gadgets and buttons do perform useful functions and are all displayed here to make life easier for you. This window on the top left gives you information about the program, how much memory is left, what processor you are using and so on. If you click on this toggle bar, the screen will change to the smove function. This is for centering the screen display, but we'll need an animation in memory first before we can use it. At this point, if you do not have an animation prepared, you might like to create one. Any one will do, even a simple one constructed in dpaint. If you don't want to go to that effort just yet, there is a simple animation on the disk. We'll load that now. Clarissa has drop menus just like many other Amiga programs, as well as hotkeys for often used functions. We go to the project menu and select load animation. We will choose the SSA demo anim for this project. If you are using the Amiga format cover disk version of Clarissa, you will find this animation on your disk. From the file requester, select Clarissa directory. Choose SSA anim directory. And choose the file. SSA Demo Anim and click on Load. A window will now appear giving you details of the animation, how many frames there are, what screen mode was used and so on. The buttons at the bottom of the window determine where into Clarissa storage space for the animation will be loaded. We will choose to load the animation into Source A. When the animation has loaded, we can now change the format of the display. Clarissa works using interlace animations, so if your animation is not already in interlace mode, now is the time to convert it. From the window at the bottom of the screen, choose the Change Anim Format button. This will open a new window with three more buttons in it. The first one allows us to change many of the characteristics of the animation. The second button is just for changing the animation into interlace mode. And the third button is for changing the animation from the Digital Creations DC TV format into an AGA display mode. We could simply use the second button now, but let's have a look at the options available under the general format controls. Having pressed the button, we will be asked which animation we wish to change the format of. We only have one logo at the moment, so we'll have to select that one. Source A. As we can see in this box, our animation is already in interlace mode, so there is no need to change it. We could change the number of colors, the screen resolution, or the overscan rate. To make any changes, we just have to click on the boxes. Let's change our animation to 16 colors and select OK. The animation will now be recorded as the master animation. You will see the slider at the top of the screen moving along as this takes place. If we now look at the top right window, 
we will see that the master animation now consists of 439 frames Let's play this animation now to see how it looks. Just click the play button in the system window. We can view any particular frame of the animation easily by simply using the scroll bar in the top of the Clarissa window. Just click and hold the left mouse button while the pointer is on the bar and the image in that position will be displayed until you release the mouse button again. Dragging the bar to the right back to the left. Now releasing the mouse button. Now I'll drag the pointer right through to the end of the animation. Okay, let's have some fun with this animation now. One of the advantages of the Clarissa system is that each frame of the animation can have a different palette. This means complete freedom when creating your animations, as all the frames are not constrained by your palette choice for the first one. It also means that Clarissa can add some great effects to your animations. Let's have a look at one now. From the bottom window, select the color button. The window will change to show all the color functions available. These could be quite useful to you, depending on what kind of animations you're hoping to produce. The buttons are all fairly self-explanatory. Color cycle cycles through the colors in the anim in much the same way as D-Paint would. Color chaos causes random color swaps in the animation for a psychedelic effect. Color flash means you can create lightning type flashes in the background over a small number of frames. Color sequence produces restricted color cycling in the image and three color cycling as an extension of this. The two fades can be used to fade in or out the animations and the stroboscope produces a regular background flash. Very useful if you wish to combine your animations with music. We'll try a simple fade in from black. Select single color fade. A requester will appear asking you if you wish to fade in or out. We will fade in. We will select white as the fade color and black as a reference. Select Macro Loop to process all the frames. You can see the progress on the top bar. The system monitor updates RAM usage and the master monitor shows the frame position and the anim size. Now press on play to see the resulting animation. Not bad, but the fade takes place over the entire duration of the animation, 
This is because we didn't select a range. Load in the demo anim again, this time directly into the master animation slot. Select load animation. demo anim and for the source into the master. A requester asks me if I want to dump the animation that's already in there, which I do, and we're ready to proceed. Now we go back to the main page and select edit. This window will now display a list of editing tools, some of which we can use to define our range. The range is displayed by a white bar underneath the scroll bar at the top of the screen. At the moment, the whole bar will be white, as our range covers the entire animation. Our fade should really take place over the first quarter of the animation. Click on the Go to Frame button and enter a value of 100, which is roughly a quarter of the way through our animation sequence. You can position the current frame using the top scroll bar if you like. Now click on Set Range End. you will see the range marker change to highlight the current range. Now let's go through our fade sequence again. Now if we click on the play button, we can see the result. As we have a range selected, only that range is played. We want to see the full animation including the fade. To go back to the full range, the easiest thing to do is select that option from the edit menu. And now we can see the whole thing by pressing the play button. This system of ranges works with all the effects on Clarissa. It is very useful when you have animations with such a large number of frames. Let's now use the screen grab function to create our own animation from within Clarissa. You'll need to run another package. I think we'll use dpaint. Click to the workbench screen and start dpaint. I'm going to use a low-res interlace display with 64 colors. Now we'll flip back to the Clarissa screen. And use the menu option to delete all the anims from memory. Click on Import Graphic from the main page and then click on SGB Pub Screen. A requester will pop up asking you to specify a screen and a hotkey. The screen identified by the question marks 
is the D-Paint screen. So click once on that. Make sure the trigger is set to hotkey. Enter a suitable hotkey in the gadget beneath. I'm choosing number one. Finally, click on start and we're ready to record. Flip back to D-Paint, pick a brush and a color, hit F10 to remove the toolbar and start drawing. Every so often we press the hotkey and the frame is automatically added to the animation. So I'm holding down the left mouse button. Dragging the box bigger in the D-Paint screen and clicking number one on the keyboard for each frame that I record. That should do it. Now we go back to Clarissa. Hit F10 to access our toolbar. Activate Clarissa by clicking on the title bar and press the play button. And there's the animation we've just created in D-Paint. Now we should save our animation. We can either save it out directly for use with Clarissa and Adarage later, or we can save it as a standalone module. This means that you can distribute your animations for use on Amigas without the need of the Clarissa program. Let's try that. From the main window, select the dialog processors. Now select make player. We can now save the data as a player file. We enter the file name in the requester and select OK. There are two ways this file can now be saved, with or without an icon. We can also select the number of repeats and the startup delay of the animation. Once the file is saved, it will now run independently of Clarissa by using the SSA Play Utility. If you want to use this animation in Clarissa again, you should also save it from the menu in the normal way. Select Save Animation, enter a suitable name, and hit the save button. Now, let's explore some of the effects available in Clarissa using an animation created in just the same way as the one you have just seen. First, I'll load the new animation into the main source. We'll take a look at it first a couple of times in its original state.
Let's go to the main window and select Effects. The DIN Anim Record macro recalculates the length of an animation, allowing the playback time of an animation to be lengthened or shortened very simply. Now we'll have a look at the VR mix effect. With this gadget, you can activate a half frame oriented forward and backward function. First you must select the animation buffer you want to treat, then the program starts processing. First the last frame, and then the first frame, then the penultimate frame, followed by the second frame, etc. When the animation is viewed, the animation runs from two directions simultaneously. If that sounds complicated, it's probably best explained by viewing the animation. The multi-HF mix macro mixes two different SSA animations together on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, a bit like shuffling a pack of cards. Clarissa can handle the two animations even if their lengths are wildly different. As there are no palette limitations, animations can be mixed together very flexibly. Select Multi-HF Mix. I have two animations loaded, one in Source A, and one in source B. Incidentally, the contents of each source can be analyzed using this bar. By toggling to source A, I see it's an animation of 91 frames. Source B contains an animation of over 500 frames. Combining these two animations will mean every sixth frame or so, a frame of animation from source A will be interleaved into the animation frames of source B. I select source A as my first source for mixing. I choose to integrate the anim with the other. Select the other animation from source B Now Clarissa is switching between Source A and Source B and combining the frames to the master channel. And here is the result. The pap wrap effect enables the creation of various wrap or internal looping effects in a very easy way. Select the source for the animation. And you can choose between normal wrap and dynamic wrap. Let's have a look at the results. First, normal wrap. The range over which I want the wrap to take place is selected by marking the in and out range points in the range selector. Here is the dynamic wrap effect. This option allows you to vary the speed of the in and out points in terms of percentage. It's another way of altering the playback speed of the animation. 
in a particular area. I hope that explains that feature of Clarissa. Now let's have a look at another. We'll take a break from the effects for now and have a look at one of the demos incorporated in the program. We've already used a screen grabber to grab a D-Paint screen. For a full explanation of how to use the screen grabber, click to the Import Graphics bar and select Screen Grabber Demo. The program runs through all the windows and shows you how to use them. One useful feature of the program is the Help menu, which is always available. Opening the Help menu displays a list of headings. Double-clicking on a heading opens a window detailing how to perform that operation. So, for instance, on View Frame, this is telling me that it shows the particular page location of an animation. When I'm through reading the description of the feature, I close the screen by clicking OK. Another bar available from the multifunction gadget is Color. The Color Cycle macro sets a color palette for color cycling, as would be used, for instance, by D-Paint. You can choose between three different cycling types. The best way to show the effect of this macro is to play you an animation prepared using all of the options. Those of a nervous disposition are advised to look away from the screen for a few moments. You've been warned. Now in the multifunction gadget, we'll have a look at some of the dialogue-based processors. First, playback modes. This allows you to set the playback speed. We're currently viewing our animations at 50 Hz. But from this requester, we could select 25 or just over 16. Let's view the animation at normal speed. Half speed. And at the 16 hertz speed. Now we'll load a new animation. Select Load Animation. The name of the animation I want to load is Fractals. Click Load. And I'll load into Source A.
Now I'll select edit and record the range, in this case the whole animation, down to the master channel. As the animation is recorded, I can view it on the animation screen by sliding the main screen down. To access the main screen controls, I return it to its normal position. From the dialog based processors bar, select playback modes. Check that my playback speed is normal. And I'll set the animation controls to play endlessly without mouse start. Now by clicking play, I can view the animation at normal speed. I can stop the animation at any point by clicking the right mouse button, which returns me to the main screen. Now I'll alter the playback speed to half speed and play the animation again. Click the right mouse button again, back to playback modes, and select the slowest speed of all for playback. Now under the multifunction gadget, we'll take a look at the edit menu. Record range records from one of my source channels to the master a range I have previously selected. And delete range speaks for itself. An easy way to set a range visually is to grab the pointer and move through the animation by dragging the mouse left or right to proceed through the animation. For instance, if I wanted my range to begin here, release the mouse button at this point and select Set Range Start. The white band now begins at the first frame I've selected. To set the end of the range, I can drag once more with the mouse until I reach the frame where I want the range to finish. And then select range end. 
here is my selected range. By pressing play, I will play only the range selected. Now I'm going to play some animation clips which have all been through the Clarissa program, either to change color, edit them, or change their playback speed. Throughout this video, you will have noted how Clarissa asks you when you import an animation into which source you want to place it. This can be confusing to those not familiar with the program, so here's a brief explanation of the principles involved. Basically, Clarissa has five areas into which animations can be imported. There are four source bins. and a fifth master bin. The four main source bins are labeled A, B, C, and D. The fifth bin is the master bin. I can import animations either from floppy or from my hard drive into any of these locations. For instance, if I import two animations into source A and source B, I can select a range of the animation I want to use in A and record it to the master channel. Then I could select a range from B, or the whole animation, and record that to the master channel. When I then played back the master channel, I would see the range selected from A, followed by the animation from B. I could then add further frames from C, B, or reuse the same animation in A and B. Not only that, but having produced my finished program in the master, I can save that out as a separate animation and re-import it into any of the four sources for further processing.
One of the problems in learning new software is there's so much to learn, it can be a bit daunting. As programs go, Clarissa is pretty friendly. Let me show you what I mean. Let's have a look at the S-Move function, which allows us to position the animation precisely on the screen. This can be done by visually positioning or as a direct edit. With visual edit selected, using the cursor keys on the keyboard, select a portion of the animation which will enable you to position the screen accurately. This can be done using the slider at the top of the screen. By selecting visual edit and using the up and down, left and right cursor arrows on the keyboard, the image can now be moved. To return to the main screen, click the right mouse button. An alternative screen positioning method is offered in direct edit. By clicking this, move the screen down a bit so we can see the animation, holding down the left mouse button and simply dragging the mouse, I can directly position the screen. Now when I play back the animation, it will be in the new position. Well, that wraps up our session with Clarissa. I hope you found it entertaining and informative. Before we go though, let's just have one last look at some of the things possible with Clarissa. We've produced this series of videos as part of our commitment to you, our readers. If you have any suggestions on how we should improve the videos or the magazine itself, please write to me, Steve Jarrett, at the address at the end of this video. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again soon.
Additional videos in the Amiga format range include Personal Paint, an introduction to the A1200, A1200 hard drives, Upgrading Your Machine, Music X, Multimedia, Desktop Video Volume 1, Desktop Video Volume 2, and finally the Amiga Format Guide to Clarissa. Priced at just $14.99 each, or any three for $34.95, they represent excellent value for money. For further details, contact BVG at the address given at the end of this video.